What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. If you're here, it's because you either have a Coleman mini bike or you've seen one and you know just how fun these things are. Uh, I've been building these out for the last year and I've had a blast with them. It's been just as much fun to work on them and modify them as it has been to take them out on the trails and mob around on them. Out of the box, these things are definitely made for just kind of putting around, but with a few modifications, they're actually a pretty capable trail bike. But more than anything, they're just a blast to ride. Really the only bad thing about the Coleman mini bike is you can't just have one. One turns into two pretty quickly just because they're so much fun to ride and you always want to have a buddy go out with you. So let me show you around mine, some of the modifications that I've made, and then we'll do a little speed test here with them. So Coleman makes a few different mini bike models. Um, I went with the BT200X. BT stands for big tube. And in my opinion, if you're gonna be off-roading these or taking these out on trails, uh, the BT is probably the way to go. Uh, these sit a little bit higher and that frame is much more sturdy. And especially if you're mounting a bigger motor on there like the 224 Predator that I have on this one, uh, you're gonna want that bigger frame. I had mounted this Predator 224 on a CT200U and it just rattled that frame so bad. Once I put it on this BT200X, it was solid. So definitely this is the frame if you want to put any type of bigger motor on there. Um, and I definitely think this is the frame if you want to go off-roading. The bikes are pretty much identical other than this one has the 224 Predator Max Performance motor on there, which is an awesome little motor from Harbor Freight. And then I did also put different off-road tires on there. I got those from Go Power Sports. This one's still just the original 196 High Sun motor that comes on the Coleman mini bikes. Both of these bikes pretty much just have the Stage 2 performance kit from OMB Warehouse. I'll do my best to put all the links down to these things down in the description so you guys can see what I've used. Everything that I've done is external. I haven't taken apart the motor. I haven't removed the gar governor. All I did was do the little zip tie bypass cheat on it, which has worked okay. I definitely feel like that governor still kicks in at the top end, but these bikes do actually really well. So that stage two performance kit, you get the air intake, the non EPA carburetor. I think eventually I'll do a Makuni carb, but this seems to be working pretty well right now. The exhaust with the silencer tip on it that has fallen off of mine. And then the one that I got has the torque converter. The torque converter sits underneath there and just basically works like a CVT, continuously variable transmission. The one thing that I like about getting the stage two kit from the OMB warehouse is it comes with that riser plate so that I didn't have to cut this crossbar. Um, it, it just rose the engine up and moved it forward slightly so that I wouldn't bump into this crossbar, which allowed me to still use this chain guard on there so I didn't have to cut that which was nice. Out of the box these go less than 20 miles an hour. You'll see with the speed test here this performance kit basically doubled what the speed was that I was getting but more than anything it gave it a lot of torque and a lot of acceleration. I don't have these built out for top speed. Uh, I use these a lot on the trails. You can see that kind of have them rigged up to kind of be a little bit of an overland bike to get into some different fishing spots on trails so that I can throw all my gear on here. So more than anything, I just wanted something that was torquey, could climb anything, and had quick acceleration to kind of get me through those trails. I could change the sprocket, I could go internal and remove the governor and everything, but as is, it's working really well, especially on the trails. And that's where these things really shine. On both of these, I did also change out to the billet flywheel, that aluminum flywheel instead of the cast iron. Just, you hear the horror stories of those things turning into basically a grenade and exploding. Um, you've seen some of the pictures or maybe videos of those. So for safety's sake, I did replace that with the billet flywheel. I have the headlights off there right now because I put the billet flywheel in there and the, the coils that run the headlight ran off of the magnets from that cast iron flywheel. So eventually I'm gonna wire up probably just a little, I've seen the Ryobi battery packs. I think that's what I'll do so that I can power the headlight and put that back on there. So I just have that off right now. So some of the non-performance modifications that I've done here is I've done uh, the rear rack. You can buy this off Coleman's website. They make uh, basically a bracket that you install underneath the seat so that you can use that frame with the BT200X. I didn't care about doing the front rack just because I never really put anything up there on the CT200U that I had. 
but the rear rack definitely works well. I have a milk crate on there right now. I can take that off and put, I have a few other small bins that I use, but the milk crate works really well for throwing my waders, my boots, uh, fishing bag, all that stuff in there. And then I just have a bungee strap that I have over the top of that to secure everything. Underneath the rack, I mounted here. Let's see if I can get this off. I mounted a waterproof canister that I put a little bit of foam lining inside and then I keep an extra bottle of fuel in there. So this is an extra 640 milliliter bottle of fuel. These are only one gallon tanks on here anyway. So this um, gives you actually quite a bit more range by adding that extra little bottle of fuel in there. It's nice and out of the way. Like I said, it's waterproof. That canister, you just stick that on there Tighten that down really good. Make sure you get that tight because that lid has popped off before. But I just secured that on there with zip ties and it's done great. I also added these little saddle bags. These are made for bicycles, uh, but it worked great on this little mini bike. I keep the registration forms and stuff in there on the side. I also keep tools, wrenches, screwdriver, anything that you might need to work on these because uh, Inevitably something ends up breaking while you're out riding them Also has a phone holder in here. That's waterproof Dust proof so I can keep my phone in there. I use my phone as my speedometer anyway So it's nice to have a little phone holder right there in front of you. This one works great because it has I don't know if you can see that two straps that go underneath But then also one strap that comes up here in the front so that secures that on there nicely I did also change out the hand grips from those little cheap ones that, that come with the bike. And I also changed out the foot pegs. Highly recommend changing out the foot pegs. Those little skinny ones that come with the bikes, your foot just slips off there, especially if it gets wet or there's any type of mud. But these have been awesome. So that's pretty much it for the modifications that I made. Basically turned them into little mountain goats, old school tote goats. So I'm gonna do a little speed test here and we'll see how these modifications have worked. Yes, I bought this helmet because this is the one that he wears in Dumb and Dumber. I just didn't feel like I could ride a mini bike and not have the same helmet as Lloyd Christmas. So first bike here is the Predator 224 on the black and red bike. Number two.
that up to 45 there. Bike number two. guys there you have it so um i honestly was surprised that the 196 matched the top speed that's literally the first time that i put a speedometer on them and done a, a top speed test the predator 224 though has a significant amount more torque if you look at the predator on harbor freight's website it advertised 10 percent more torque than other similar motors including the 196 so that's really what you notice with it is off the start you almost willy over every single time. I had to like come ease into the throttle a lot more with the 224 than with the 196, but they both got to that same top speed. In all honesty, I could take them apart, remove the governor, go through all those steps, but going faster than 45 miles an hour on these things is honestly a little bit scary. <laughs> and there's really never a situation where you're on the trail where you're going to go faster than 45 miles an hour. So having that low end torque, uh, that quick acceleration and the ability to climb uh, is exactly what I'm looking for. And so I don't think I'm gonna make any more modifications to these uh, at the time being. I'm pretty happy with them uh, as they are right now. And they're just a ton of fun to ride. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments below. We'll finish this one off with me and my brother out riding on the trail yesterday, which was a blast. And if you guys like this type of content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And we'll see you all on the next video. Thanks guys.